Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Once again, thank you all of those who are watching, uh, listening to us on ACIM Gather. We're so happy that you are there. And thank you everybody who is watching the live stream. And now, thank you to anybody who might be watching our YouTube video. And uh, our YouTube videos are prepared for us very lovingly by Reverend Kelly Halleck, our assistant minister. And there is a YouTube video of every Sunday gathering talk for the last uh, two plus, two and a half years. So uh, watch all of our videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. You'll get a little notification of when a new video is put up there. So uh, this is uh, October 7th. I haven't spoken in a while. Uh, happy to be here. The title of my talk today is Trust Squared. That's what that little two sign means. Uh, so Trust Squared. I made sure I spelled it out so that people would understand and really get it. So uh, let's have a little math instruction here. When you square a number, it means you multiply it by itself. So uh, three squared is three times three or nine, okay? <laughs> Eight squared is eight times eight, or 64. 10 squared is 10 times 10, or 100. So obviously, the, the higher the number gets, when it's squared, then the, the result is like a, a very high number. And as the numbers get higher, then the result gets higher. And the increase is what's called exponential. So it has an exponential increase. It doesn't increase like this. It increases like that. So trust. Trust squared. I think it's time to increase our trust. I think we actually are increasing our trust as a, as a species. And I'm going to try to prove that. And I think what we're seeing and what we're going to feel is this exponential uh, rise in our experience. And just like um, a square is when a number is multiplied by itself, the greatest increase of trust is when we begin to trust our trust. So we trust in the fact that we trust in the divine to handle all our issues and problems and all the issues and problems that are in the world. So trusting our trust is really trust squared and that's a huge value because trust is a huge virtue. So huge times huge is really huge. <laughs> So I'm talking about something huge today, really huge. Okay, first of all, trust. Trust is a very common uh, idea, virtue, something talked about in the Course of Miracles a lot. Uh, in the teacher's manual, in the development of trust section, uh, or I'm sorry, in, in yeah, the development of trust section, it talks uh, about trust and how it's developed in the stages uh, of trust. That's a very interesting section. And trust is listed as the first of ten characteristics of the teachers of God. So there's ten characteristics of the teachers of God. Trust is the first one. And then it tells us that trust is the foundation for the other nine. It says this is the foundation on which the teacher of God's ability to fulfill their function rests. So everything that we are going to do as teachers of God all the miracles that we're going to perform and be a part of, and the atonement, it's all going to be founded on the foundation of trust. So I thought I'd just, just think about what foundation means and where the word uh, comes from. And the foundation of a home is the structure that the home is built on top of. And what you do, hopefully, is you clear away the topsoil and the loose material so you get to something solid. And then you put real solid stuff on top of that, like cement blocks or bricks or stone, something really solid on something solid. And then you level it off, and that's the foundation, and then you build upon the foundation. So it's that solid thing that rests on something else, even more solid. In San Francisco, this is a huge issue, mm -hmm. because in order for it to have a, a, a foundation, uh, you really have to go down supposedly to the bedrock because it's earthquake prone here and in order to be uh, earthquake proof you're supposed to really anchor into the bedrock so all those big buildings downtown they have to go way down into the bedrock they have to sink iron bars into the bedrock in order to you know be uh, seismically 
uh, okay. So, you know, just think about that. That's what trust is. It's that solid, solid foundation upon which everything else is built. And we all have another little thing that I know we all know to help us to think about foundations. It's the three little pigs. Oh, so oh. remember the three little pigs? <laughs> One of them built his house upon the dirt. In other words, no foundation. <laughs> that house didn't last very long when the big bad wolf came around. And then the other one built his house upon straw, which was also not a very good foundation. And that house didn't last too long when the big bad wolf came along. But the third pig, the smart pig, uh, put his house on brick. You know, built a solid foundation. And upon that solid foundation, uh, the big bad wolf huffed and puffed and couldn't blow that house down. So, you know, think about that. We need that foundation. The foundation is trust. We need to trust our trust. We need to square our trust so that our experience of being a miracle worker is exponentially increased. And I think that is what is happening. And that's a very, very powerful thing to do. To trust your trust is very powerful. And of course, a miracle says when this power has once been experienced, it is impossible to trust one's own petty strength again. Who would attempt to fly with the tiny wings of a sparrow when the mighty power of an eagle has been given him? So when we have that solid foundation and we're anchoring it in, in the power of the divine, the power of God, the power of who and what we are, um, we're like eagles flying, soaring to whatever heights we may want to. We're not sparrows flying lowly. We're eagles soaring high. Uh, of course, the Miracles uses that sparrow ego analogy metaphor. That, that's a real metaphor in the Course of Miracles. It uses it twice. Uh, that one was from the manual. Um, the nine other characteristics of God's teachers all rest on trust. That's why it's so very important. And then uh, one last quotation on trust. And this is, uh, was in the quotations that Brad read. It said, I trust my brothers who are one with me. Trusting your brothers is essential to establishing and holding up your faith in your ability to transcend doubt and lack of sure conviction in yourself. So we have to trust, and we have to trust that our brothers and sisters are fulfilling their particular function, their particular role, just in the way they're supposed to do that. And that's challenging. Uh, it's challenging in the world right now. It's challenging in the political arena. A lot of people were challenged this week by what was going on in the political arena. But we need to trust our brothers and sisters who are one with us, that they're all doing the exact thing that somehow they have to do for the greater good because all things really are working together uh, for our good. And we need to trust that. We need to see the Christ in all of these people in order to affirm the Christ in ourselves. Okay, so that's a little of the theory. That's a little of what A Course in Miracles was talking about. But I said I wanted to talk a little bit about what I got a flash on this week about what's going on in the world. There's a, there's a very amazing thing, I think, that's going on in the world. And we have, I, don't, I don't hear too many people talking about it. So I'm going to start with it. And first of all, it's Uber. Let's talk about Uber a little bit, okay? So in 2009, Uber started. And where did they start? Here in San Francisco. Okay, so Uber started in San Francisco. And what Uber is, is it's a way to basically bypass the usual cab industry. And it's a way where people drive their own cars, and they're their own drivers, and you as a, as a consumer just connect with another person through an app, and then you trust them. You trust this person who may be not a professional driver. He may not be driving a, quote, professional car. There was something about taxis. I mean, you assumed those were professional drivers that had some particular kind of license that they did. They had, a, you know, they had to have some particular kind of authorization. They were on a particularly authorized car that the, the cab company had authorized. There were all these societal things implemented so that you would pay them, so that you would trust them. And Uber kind of bypassed most of that. I mean, they had to have some regulation, but they bypassed a lot of it. And basically, you just connected with another person, just like you, who had a car. 
and you got in their car and rode somewhere with them. That's an amazing thing of trust. We're trusting these other people who aren't these so-called professionals that we thought may have thought needed to have that. They didn't have the usual professional uh, accoutrement and licenses. In 2012, Lyft started. Where was Lyft started? Here in San Francisco. <laughs> Um, and, and Lyft actually evolved out of something called Zimride, which actually started before Uber. So Lyft uh, came in, and it's, it's very similar to Uber, but again, an app, you connect with other people that actually are kind of very much like you. When, when Lyft first started, the drivers and the riders were supposed to give each other a fist punch, give a fist punch, because they were supposed to really just be affirming how how alike you were to each other. And they came up with those big pink mustaches that they put on the cars. And you know, they, they, were, they were having a, I mean, obviously they're from San Francisco, right? They're having a little more flair with it. They decided to eliminate the, the mustaches because they found that professionals, you know, business people didn't like showing up to their meetings and workplaces in a car with this big pink mustache on it. So they changed that. But okay, so this totally changed the taxi business. Uh, and it's, it's really a, a, a new business, it's a whole new business model. It's, it's, uh, the prices are set really by market pricing, not by a corporation deciding. It's, it's, there's a, it's just a very different model. And again, based on trust. In 2009, another car sharing thing developed. It was called, it's called Get Around. Now Get Around, and actually our own uh, Reverend Lucas use this just a couple of weeks ago. Get around is where you just connect with a neighbor and you just take their car. You drive their car. You drive their car for a day or two. You need to, or whatever. You need to run an errand. You need to take a trip. You just take their car. They trust you to take their car. You trust them that their car is running and good. And What, what an amazing amount of trust that is. Now, we used to rent cars from companies that were licensed and the cars were elaborately inspected and you know it had a different business model and now we're so trusting really that we'll just connect with a neighbor through an app and go take their car and market pricing decides how much you'll exchange and you do that and everybody feels real good about it and get around was started in 2009 where in San Francisco <laughs> okay one more all right Airbnb. Airbnb. Think about it. This is where people just decide, I'm going to make a little extra money. I got an apartment. I got a room. I'll just uh, put it on the internet and people who are traveling can just come and stay in my room. And yeah, there's a little bit of regulation with it or a little regulation has evolved. But think of it. We just, the travelers just trust they're going to stay with a stranger in a strange home that they don't really know. And uh, the stranger is trusting these other strangers just going to come in and stay in their home, bypassing the usual hotel business. And that started in 2007. And guess where Airbnb started? San Francisco. <laughs> San Francisco. San Francisco uh, must be the epicenter for trust, right? No, it just must be. <laughs> I don't know what it is about us here, but we're just, a, we're just a trusting lot here. There's so much diversity. There are so many people we brush elbows with. We just get used to everybody, and we start trusting everybody. And I think it's, it's, it, th these are amazing things, and they're all part of a, a, a larger movement of shared resources. I mean, we do this with cars. We do it with bicycles now. You got those uh, Ford Go Bikes. You don't have to own a bike anymore. There's bicycles everywhere and you just rent them for the hour that you need them. There's these other bikes. I mean, there's, there's this, this whole model of how to live, especially in an urban environment, uh, to be able to live with fewer resources, with sharing resources, based on this trust that we have. I mean, society is, is changing uh, drastically and I don't know if people are really noticing that. So I noticed it. And I wanted to talk about it a little bit today because I think it's an, a, an amazing accomplishment. You know, I think it shows the world healing in a way that 
I don't remember seeing it. They're in, in a new way. And, and the implications this is going to have on our culture, on our society, in years to come are unfathomable. I don't, you know, we, we don't really know how this is all going to work out. But you've got a whole population of people working together, pooling their resources, communicating together on these amazing communication devices that we all carry around that have access to the world's information. This is a new era. This is a new age. And a lot of it is based on trust. Uh, a lot of it is also based on this principle called market pricing. And, uh, you know, I talked some weeks ago about this book I was reading and that I've listened to a couple times called The Better Angels of Our Nature. And he talks about this concept of uh, this quality of market pricing, and it's actually one of the factors that's helping make us less violent, is we're learning to just let the market adjust a price on things. And we as individuals are doing things with market pricing that before we would not have. So if a friend of yours wants to buy something that you have, let's say you're selling your car, a friend of yours wants to buy your car, you check the market as to what the car is worth, and you charge your friend what the, like, what the blue book value is. Of you. And, and that's just considered fair. That's a good way. Years ago, that might not have happened. Your friend might have been insulted that you wanted to make a fair amount of money for your car. You know, he's your friend. You should have just given him a, a great year. Just given him your car. So this idea that friends can now relate with market pricing is actually a great thing of fairness, and it's a great thing of trust, and it's a great thing that's going on in the civilization process, and it's a great thing that's helping reduce violence. He, he has this whole argument for it. That, that's helping reduce violence in our world and in our culture is this reliance on market pricing. So, you know, uh, the, the car sharing thing, like get around. The market sets the price. You borrow your neighbor's car. Now, years ago, it may have been your neighbor, and, you know, he should have just lent you his car. No, now you borrow his car, but you give him what the fair market value is. And, you know, uh, we can embrace this. That this is something that's actually a good thing that's helping us work together. It's helping us be more civilized in a new way. It's helping us be one. It's helping us have trust. It's helping us lower violence. And I think that that's what trust squared is actually doing. We're building our trust upon our trust, and that's an incredible foundation. It's an incredible bedrock. Faithfulness is a teacher of God's trust in the Word of God to set all things right. Not some, but all. So we need to have that faith, we need to have that trust, that that bedrock that we've anchored in, the Word of God, that we're now anchored in so firmly is going to set all things right. Not some things, all things. Trust into that bedrock. Okay, so recent challenges we've had here at Community Miracle Center. We needed to have a new place to uh, have our Sunday gathering. Uh, this was always uh, considered a temporary place, but then the fact that it was really temporary became <laughs> came home to us even stronger. We need to find a new place. It was a challenge, but we had trust, and now a new place has opened up, and through the help of uh, our board member, minister, longtime member, Reverend Vincent Fuqua. Hi, Reverend Vincent. Uh, we've gotten a new place and a wonderful building. We'll only be here for two more weeks, and then we're moving to uh, 25 Van Ness Avenue. We're very excited about that. For those of you watching the live stream, the backdrop may look exactly the same, but we'll be, but we'll be in some place new. Uh, I have to have trust in everything. I had trust that that was going to work out. That worked out. Why? Because we're anchored in the bedrock of the Word of God and the power of the divine. I'm working on my taxes. I've got to have trust that by October 15th, which I believe is next Monday, <laughs> that I'm going to have these things done. And it's a lot of work because my bookkeeping is really complicated and I've got to get through all my 2017 bookkeeping and I was behind with it, but I'm, I'm working away in it and I'm plugging along and, and I'm having it. And when I get anxious, I remember trust and I remember that I trust my trust, that I got trust squared and that's very powerful, it's exponential. And I just trust that it's all going to get worked out. I had a challenge last night, I'm gonna share it. 
I went for my regular uh, medical checkup this past week. They did all the usual tests, all the blood tests, all the urine tests. I'm pretty healthy. Everything seems pretty good. Last night, I get an email from my doctor. They found blood in my urine. And so now he wants me to go in for more tests. This could be something, you know, some could be something serious. It could be something not so serious. We don't know what it is. Got to go in for more tests. So, you know, I had, nobody likes to get news like that. <laughs> Nobody's happy with that kind of email. And I had my effect, but I'm bedrocked in trust. You know, I trust the Word of God to set all things right, not just some things. So I just trust that this is going to get set right and that I don't have to be worried about it. I can just move forward because I've got trust on trust. I multiply my trust by trust itself. I trust my trust. I'm bedrocked in the Word of God. I got trust squared. I turn it over to the Holy Spirit and I just move forward in faith. So thank you for listening. That's my talk for today. Yay. Yay.